hear about the Georgia PDMP from Ms. Pierce afterwards. And certainly, PDMPs are a useful tool for all of us, a very useful clinical decision-making tool, not a panacea. I think the conversation early on was, if we just get everyone to use and check the PDMP, we're going to solve this problem. And we want to make sure that actually there is no one magic wand. Uh, there is no one-size-fits-all solution. But PDMPs are a very important tool. And so even in 2014, when PDMPs, um, I would say, were, were in their infancy uh, in some states, we still encourage physicians and, and other providers to register for and use them. Again, not as a panacea, but as an important clinical making tool. And you know, they're different in every state. You're, again, you're going to hear about uh, Georgia's, and I'll just share, I always share a couple of features about our uh, PDMP in Georgia that I like. And one is the note that you get when a patient that you are working with is on maybe medication, same medication, uh, or in my case, I had prescribed a medication for anxiety, a benzodiazepine for my patient and another uh, physician had prescribed an opioid. And I know you all know that is a deadly, potentially deadly combination. <laughs> In fact, a lot of our overdose deaths, uh, even before, were, were due to that combination. But I love the, the, the notice says, and, uh, and Ms. Pierce can uh, remind me exactly what it says, but it's sort of like, I'll paraphrase it, no judgment, but doctor, did you know, just wanted you to know, that you have a patient uh, that's on a couple of medications and you may want to do something about it. So I really, uh, really like that. Now we do know, um, and I can probably say this, uh, Sheila cannot, that um, we need more funding. Uh, we need our PDPs to be integrated into our electronic health records. Right now, for me personally, I am in my electronic health record. Then if I want to prescribe a medication, need to check the PDMP, I have to get out of that, go into the Georgia PDMP uh, database. And then if it's, I want to electronically prescribe a controlled substance, which by the way, I like to do. New York mandates, by the way, uh, electronic prescription of controlled substances. Uh, but a lot needs to go into it before that, but it's very clunky. I, you have to have the two-factor identification. I feel like it takes me 10 steps. You know, the AMA, we talk about death by a thousand clicks. And so I'm in, and then I go back to my PDMP, which I probably kicked, I'm sorry, my electronic health record, which I'm probably kicked out of by now, and I have to re-log in again. So we have a lot to do to integrate uh, those systems that we need, and uh, state PDMP administrators need funding uh, to make these tools work. We also know that we need to enhance our education and training on substance use disorders, on pain, and on opioids. And you hear all the time that some of the older physicians, and I'll include myself in that category, of course I'm a psychiatrist, so I had training afterwards, but in medical school, uh, weren't trained on substance use disorders, on opioids, and pain. And you will find that to be true. But again, that's not unusual. There are a lot of things that I wasn't trained on when I was in medical school because it didn't exist. We didn't have a full understanding. The 1980s were the decade of the brain where we really were able to understand mental illnesses, mental disorders, and substance use disorders. But we need to now uh, make sure that everyone enhances their education on those three, three areas. If you don't remember anything else I say today, go out of this room knowing that we need to make sure we have more opportunities for treatment. Treatment, treatment, treatment for those who have a substance use disorder. And we are encouraging more physicians, primary care physicians, anyone to become certified to provide buprenorphine. How many of you have heard about buprenorphine or medication-assisted treatment? Okay, that, that is an evidence-based, gold standard treatment for those who have opioid use disorder. Now, how many of you have heard about methadone? So more people know about methadone, by the way, you can have whatever opinion you like, but methadone is an evidence-based treatment. It works for those who have an opioid use disorder. The problem is there are a lot of regulations regarding methadone. It has to be in the facility. Those regulations are appropriate, by the way. It has to be in the facility, and it comes with all these uh, regulatory issues. Buprenorphine does not. That treatment can occur in an office. 
And that's one reason why we believe that we want more physicians and those practitioners in the states where they can um, to get certified to provide that office-based treatment. And it's not that you have to go 90 miles to find a method.